Brothers and sisters, tonight we are very fortunate to have been invited Bhante Buddha Rakita all the way from Uganda, Africa. Bhante first encountered Buddhism in 1990 while studying in India. He was ordained as a Theravada Buddhist monk by the late Sayadaw Wu Silananda, Silananda in 2002 at the Tathagata Meditation Center in San Jose, California. Bhante then spent the next eight years under the guidance of Bhante H. Guna Ratana at the Bhavana Society, West Virginia. Bhante is the founder and abbot of the Ugandan Buddhist Center in Uganda. Bhante is also a visiting professor at the Union Theological Seminary in New York, USA. He is also the spiritual advisor to the Global Buddhist Relief in New Jersey. Since 2005, Bhante has been teaching meditation in Africa, Australia, Europe, Asia, South America, and the United States. His book, Planting the Dharma Seeds, The Emergence of Buddhism in Africa, tells the story of his religious and spiritual work in Africa. Bhante is also the author of Sowing Seeds of Peace, Mindfulness Meditation for Finding Peace Within, a practical guide to mindfulness in your daily life. Ten years ago, Bhante was on a Dharma tour in Malaysia around May and June in 2011. So we would like to welcome Bhante back. This talk is jointly organized by BGF and the Theravada Buddhist Council. Over to you, Bhante. All right. Yes, yeah, so uh, maybe there was some disconnection, but I'll, I'll, I'll just continue. Uh, my talk today is uh, rekindling the Buddhist missionary spirit. Uh, so, uh, I hope uh, you can actually change the slide for me. Uh, you go to the next slide. Yes, I'm giving this talk from Uganda, where I am born. Uh, I'm now teaching Dharma here. Uh, for those people who don't know where Uganda is, <laughs> it's right there. In the, but to you, it looks like Central Africa. And I'm based in Entebbe near uh, Kampala, the capital city, and the airport is in Entebbe. Uh, that's where we have Uganda Buddhist Center, right at the shore of Lake Victoria. It's very, very beautiful, actually, uh, for the practice of the Dharma. So we go to the next slide. Uh, so I just keep on talking, and you, I, I prompt you to change the slide. All right, OK. So now that's where we are now. So uh, when I became a monk, I was in USA uh, practicing with Bhante Gunaratana, uh, who actually uh, had here in India, and uh, I was training under him in the United States. I started learning from him how he actually uh, uh, taught the Dharma in USA, and his experience in teaching in Malaysia and other countries like in India. So uh, one statement that really resonated, resonated with me in uh, uh, Buddha's teaching, I'm going to read it for you. And uh, I, I know that this is a statement and it's very helpful for others to, 
rekindle uh, the missionary spirit. So this is the statement you find in Mahavaga. The Buddha said uh, like this, send forth uh, the, the 60 monk, actually fully enlightened beings to various places propagate uh, the Dharma. Actually, he said it to many places in, in, in Ceylon. This is a statement he said, free I from all bonds, whether divine or human, you too, O bhikkhus, freed from all bonds, whether divine or human, go forth, O bhikkhus, for the good of the many, for the happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world, for the good benefit and happiness of humans and gods. Let not two go, uh, in other words, let not two bhikkhus, more monks, go uh, uh, go by one one way. So, in other words, two monks should not go in this in one way. They should speak. The Dharma is excellent in the end, both in spirit and in the letter. Proclaim the holy life altogether perfect and pure. There are many beings with little dust in their eyes who, not hearing the Dharma, we fall away. We fall away. Uh, uh, there, there, there be those who understand the Dharma. I too, because I uh, will go to Uruvera in Semani Gama in order to preach the Dhamma. Hoist, hoist the flag to the sage. Preach the sublime dharma. Work for the good of others. You have done your duties. So this really uh, summarizes all what a Buddhist missionary has to do. So these are the four points we are going to discuss from uh, uh, from that phrase uh, we find in Mahavaga. So uh, one that I can distill from that phrase is purification of one's mind. Uh, so uh, when we do missionary work, we need to go through the process of purification. And this kind of purification can take form, of course, of practicing the, the Buddha's teaching on the Noble Eightfold Path and all Buddha's teaching. But it basically means purifying greed, attachment, and all its forms. Uh, when we do this missionary work, we need to do the opposite of greed and attachment. We need to really uh, practice letting go of material thing, our energy, because most of the time we'll be spending our time and energy to do the missionary work. And this is not uh, work that's really is we are doing uh, for the financial gains, but for the benefit of all beings. So we need to let go uh, our time and material things and practice generosity. The good news is that when we practice generosity, we get happiness, we get back happiness. Most people say, oh, you know, uh, I don't have anything, especially for me when I became a monk, there was nothing I can give. Uh, especially apart from Dharma. So I have to practice generosity of my time and energy. So whenever I came back to Uganda, I would teach Dharma, following Buddha's teaching, of course. And then I would let go my time because most of us, we are attached to our time. You know, our time, uh, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to attend with this wedding, I have to attend to this. So always attached our time. Um, giving it is like giving all our belongings, basically. But when we can give time, it is that relief uh, that you are giving time to people who need it and you are doing the Dharma work. So most people don't want to give time, give up time. Uh, they are attached to their time and energy because they, it's close to their ego. You know, They really hold on to it. You know? 
So, but uh, when we let go of our, uh, and then we practice generosity, then we can rekindle uh, the missionary spirit. So then hatred, uh, number two, uh, that's what we need to purify, hatred and all its forms like anger, uh, resentment, and the, instead of this hatred and anger, we practice metal loving kindness and compassion. In fact, this is what the Buddha said, do it out of compassion. Go and spread the teaching of the, of the Buddha out of compassion. The, the, that's karuna in Pali language. But also loving kindness. We, we, we have to wish beings, all beings, all sentient beings, uh, happiness. Uh, actually, that should be a very, very good motivation. And whenever we do that, we are rekindling our missionary spirit. The more we do the Dhamma, uh, the more we, we, we really find out more joy of helping others so that they can be more happy. And the good news also is the more we, we uh, radiate loving kindness, meta, we feel more happiness. That's the beauty of Buddha's teaching, that the more you do uh, this practice, the more you feel happiness. So for me, when I was new, I, most people didn't understand me. They were saying that I'm going to mental hospital uh, because they were dressed in my robes. Uh, then I, I just say, oh, you know, may you be well up at this too. I didn't hit them because they are saying that I'm going to mental hospital, coming from a mental hospital life. They saw me dressed. So I know that loving kindness is very, very helpful to rekindle the missionary spirit. Now, the third point is delusion. We need to purify delusion and the ignorance and practice wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important when it comes to missionary work because we need to discern, discern how much I can do, and how much I can give my time. So this wisdom is very, very important and that goes very well with the compassion because compassion without wisdom, then uh, we might get what, to call, what the modern term called compassion fatigue. Mm -hmm. We do a lot, then we don't know where to stop. But uh, with wisdom and compassion, then it, it balances out. In fact, on the other touch, and then we may not lift a finger. We, we can just, why should I go and help them? But with wisdom, we can see both compassion and wisdom, then both uh, work very well in rekindling um, missionary spirit so that we don't burn out because there's a lot of work to do with missionary work. So you can easily get burned out. But with this, those components of compassion, uh, work. then the, the mind is uh, uh, purifying fear and practice courage. Well, uh, when you do missionary work, sometimes there's fear or what people are going to say, or how, how can I go to this area, which is uh, maybe you, you, you want to spread the Dhamma somewhere in a place where they don't know the Dhamma, then you're afraid, you know, and what would people do to me, you know? So, but when you practice courage, then you can have this and then uh, uh, spread the Dhamma. That's what I did in Uganda. Uh, when I, I came to Uganda, there was some kind of fear, actually. Uh, these people, they have never seen somebody in the robes. What are, they going to, what are the people going to say? I used to think like that. And I was right. People said a lot of things. Others thought I don't have one arm. Others thought that I'm, I'm a Maasai tribe. Other people think that I'm a Nigerian. So nobody understand me. So, But the courage to go forward. I kept on coming to Uganda and uh, I, I stayed here and then established that it's the purpose of spreading the Dhamma. Uh, in the phrase of, uh, that I read to you in Mahavaga, it talks about spreading the Dhamma uh, for the benefit 
and uh, for the welfare and, and for the happiness of all beings. That should be the purpose, overall overriding purpose. Uh, yes, of course, there are so many benefits when you do that, but this is the main purpose of spreading Dharma so that people can achieve the practice of Dharma we all know is to attain ultimate happiness, Nibbana. But before that, uh, the, when we teach Dharma, we ourselves will be happy and peaceful. And also, uh, when we spread it uh, to others, then they will become the Dharma. People come into Uganda here. I mean, in Uganda here, people keep on coming to me and say, wow, I like to learn this Dharma, though I'm, uh, I'm from a different religion, uh, but uh, I like to learn the Dharma. The, um, but I'm not going to change my religion. Some of the people here in Uganda, they, they say that I'm not going to come to the temple, but I'll send the children. I like my children to learn the Dharma. Me, it's too late. So I say, no problem. So really, people uh, really see us and uh, they, they admire us, those who are practicing the Dharma. And they, they really say, okay, I would like my ch children to also learn the Dharma. So because they can see the Dharma is leading to happiness, and also we spread it for the benefit and welfare of others. The third point uh, in its pristine way, sublime Dharma. This one, we mean, of course, practicing the Noble Eightfold Path, and uh, I can summarize the noble effort path into ethical conduct, concentration, and wisdom. So this is very, very important since all, most of you, uh, you know the noble effort path <clears throat> very well. And uh, that's what the Buddha taught, basically. And he wants us to follow closely uh, what we do and what we teach should be directly or indirectly connected to uh, the Noble Eightfold Path, which is summarized into three groups, um, uh, Sila group, uh, Samadhi group, and Panya group. That means ethical conduct, concentration, and wisdom. So when we spread Dharma, we should be different from uh, other people who go to do things like give things to the poor, uh, same thing. Uh, but for us uh, who are propagating our motivation of doing these things, hmm? uh, our motivation of, let's say, generosity, uh, our motivation of uh, uh, learning the Dharma, really having faith in the Dharma. So what's the motivation behind? Because also other traditions have generosity, have faith. But when you look at the Buddha's teaching, hmm, the way Buddha said, teach the Dharma, which is excellent in the beginning, that's ethical conduct, in the middle, concentration, and then at the end. That means even when we are doing, a, uh, let's say we are giving things to others, we should remember that we are actually giving we are practicing generosity as a basis, basis and support for the practice of uh, sila, ethical conduct. Whatever we are doing it should be aligned to this uh, teaching, the ethical conduct, concentration, and wisdom. The fourth point is patience. Patience, the Buddha said, enduring patience is the, the highest austerity. So from my ex experience here in Uganda, to spread Buddhism in Uganda, I have to practice a lot of patience be because most of the time people come here, they challenge me a lot. They say, you don't believe in, in, in our teachings. Is this religion, uh, what is it, Buddhism or, you know, you should, you, should, you should leave it for Indians. Why would African practice Buddhism? So people really say a lot of things because Buddhism is a new religion in Uganda here. Yeah. 
So what helps me a lot is to practice patience. And along with that patience, of course, I have to be mindful. Whenever people say something, I practice mindfulness. But really what's helped me, what's helping me even up to now is to be patient with how the Dharma, uh, I have the intention to teach the Dharma. Mm? I have the effort to propagate the Dharma here, but I don't hold on to the results. Uh, the results will come uh, in the course of time. So that allows me to focus on the process other than the end results of my uh, propagation of the Dharma here in Africa. So what does that mean is I do what I can do um, with the wholesome intention, whether it's uh, teaching Dharma or starting a school or, or providing water to the community. So I do it out of compassion, of course, but I don't say, oh, you know, I've been giving water to people. When are they going to come to my temple to realize that I'm, I'm teaching them compassion in action? So I just do what I need to do and uh, I don't focus on the results, whether people are coming or not. Uh, that's their choice. But ultimately, the people come uh, without being forced. I don't force them, oh, you come and land at them on Sunday. There's a Sunday service. You are missing a lot. So I leave them. But I just continue to do what I need to do. But uh, you can see them starting coming. Ah, oh, wow, I missed last Sunday. Uh, last Sunday I missed, but actually I like to continue to come. So patience allows me to uh, open my heart to see how uh, what I'm doing unfolds. It's just like a planting a tree. When you plant a tree, you seeds, you know. When you, uh, you plant a seed, you don't force it. You just put in the soil, then give it water and soil, and it germinates. You don't uh, force it to bring fruits. So in other words, I don't force my, uh, I don't, uh, have this expectation of these fruits. Do what I need to do, and the fruit, fruits will come. The fruits of my work will come definitely. That one I can count on it, but I don't force uh, this um, process. I have some kind of patience to see how things unfold. So we go to another slide. All right, this one uh, is when I landed in Uganda in 2005 with nothing but that tent and that arms ball. So that's my beginning of propagating Dharma. Before that, I had done in 1999, I went for meditation for three months to purify my mind. And I went to Burma, I went to Sri Lanka, but really, I went to Burma to start the Buddhist, uh, where my teacher came from also, Sadosananda. Uh, I want to learn to gain a lot of faith in Buddhist places, pilgrimages, to Buddha Gaya, and all these things. So basically, what I was doing is to get more faith, get, get more wisdom, uh, do a lot of meditation in a monastery. So really spending time in a monastery and meditating for three months uh, in uh, like uh, in 1999 helped me to get more light, more kindling my light basically. Because without that, it will be very weak, uh, very, very weak to do Dharma work. So Dharma work needs solid practice of loving kindness, of compassion, of wisdom, of mindfulness. And that's what I did. So before I went in, with that tent in Uganda. Actually, I had done what the, the, those things I've, I've taught you already, the four aspects of rekindling the uh, mission work. Uh, and uh, of course, once I felt that uh, uh, I have some uh, kindness, I have compassion, I have some uh, generosity, I set my foot on Africa uh, with that mobile tent that I was, it was given uh, by a lady from Thailand. And then uh, I, I just arrived in Uganda with those th things that you're seeing. 
And then uh, my mother on the other picture, you can see my mother and sister and my cousin, nephews and niece. So those are the first, first five disciples, just like the Buddha. So I was giving them the five precepts because I know that's how to propagate the Dharma, right? Uh, I told you, uh, uh, propagate the Dharma in the beginning. So that's what I was administering, administering five precepts to the first five followers in Uganda. So let's go to another slide. So that's how the journey started. Uh, now, obviously, you know, in Uganda, there was no temple. And um, <laughs> so there was nothing, basically. So uh, what happened, I went back to the United States. And um, uh, of course, at uh, that time I was in, in a tent and I, I told the people in the United States and Canada, uh, uh, California, I told them, well, when I go to Uganda, I have a mobile, a mobile temple. <laughs> they didn't know what's a mobile temple. <laughs> I told them it's a tent. And it's get, even when it rains, it gets wet <laughs> at night. So then they told me, oh, you know, can you find a, a land so that we can buy the land? So uh, I went to... to back to Uganda and we bought a land, but the land had no temple. So what I did is to have that and my arms bow. And we, this is again, an upgrade. Uh, at least we have a land there. Before it was a tent, uh, but now we have a land where Uganda Boot Center is now. You can see the Lake Victoria in the background. So I used to conduct puja there, and uh, that's uh, really my good memories of the first temple in Uganda. So we go to another slide. That's all what we had, actually, a few bricks. <laughs> so now this is a brief background of Uganda Buddhist Center, of course. And Buddha's teaching is actually uh, is to achieve ultimate peace and happiness. Now, of course, um, our mission is to, pro to preserve and teach the original teaching of the Buddha, spread Buddhist, Buddhist culture of peace within the African culture context, context and develop a leading center for Buddhist study and research in Africa. So that's, uh, uh, that's uh, that, of course, our value is peace. We don't need to go through that, but uh, you already been introduced uh, by the, the host, so I don't need to read the slide. We can go to the next one. Next, next slide, please. So then uh, on the world and build a Buddhist temple there. Uh, I built it like a church uh, because I knew uh, if I imported design from Vietnam, from Malaysia, from Thailand, Obama, uh, I'll have problems. So I had to construct it like a church, but inside is the Buddha statue. So most people come, they know that this is a church because of the shape. This shape is very common in Africa of churches. So when they come, they know that at least this is a place where you can pray. Um, when they come, they don't see the, of course, the, the, the symbols, the Buddhist symbols, but already they have come already. So they have already uh, started uh, their uh, understanding of a temple when I explained the Noble Eightfold Path. You can see the sign there in front. Uh, it's a wheel, the Dhamma Chakka hmm? wheel. So they, uh, then whenever they come, I try to explain them right there and tell them this is the, our teaching. So I explain each of them. So those who don't want to come to the inside, inside the temple, they stay outside, so I teach them from outside because most of the people in Uganda, when they, they see it's a temple, then they remember Chinese films. Oh, I know that somebody, recently somebody came and said, I'm not going to enter the temple. We said, why? Oh, you know, I, I had that one, somebody went into the temple and he saw disappeared completely and never came back into the body. <laughs> so many people don't also enter our temple. They stay outside. But okay, I said, no need to enter. Then I, I explain everything of our teaching just outside, right there. So uh, that's part of my missionary work to make sure that the temple explains things from outside also without having to enter. Okay, we can continue. 
That's inside of, of course, that's a Buddha statue. Uh, it's very familiar to you. you. Don't need to say much. That's where we meditate because we need a place where we can propagate the Dhamma. And for me, teaching Dhamma in this center uh, it has helped me a lot. The people come for the first time to see the temple and they are so surprised. They say, wow, we can come and meditate. It's very peaceful. So that's how I, I had to create such an environment that is peaceful for people to come and meditate. Next fly, slide. Uh, propagation of the Dhamma through the practice of Shisho engaged Buddhism. Actually, to tell you uh, the truth, uh, when I was becoming a monk, I didn't know that I have to do all these things. But when I became a monk and uh, I practiced uh, for eight years, I stayed in West Virginia. And uh, I came back here in Uganda and started teaching the way I used to teach Dharma in USA. People were not getting it. So I said, oh, let me learn through the school of hard knocks. So I started uh, a, a, some of the programs that can help people to make it up for the benefit and for the happiness and for the welfare. So what I did actually is to make this transition from the way I was teaching Dharma in USA, and I started really making these programs. One of the programs we have is education programs. We have daily and weekly mindfulness meditation, international meditation retreats. We have, we have that once a year. Uganda Buddhist Center Peace School. We have uh, like 24 children uh, now. Each class has 12 kids, but now due to COVID, it's uh, been closed. So we are, we are actually going to construct a Buddhist primary school. This is going to be the first one of which kind in, in Africa, actually. So in Africa, we don't have a Buddhist primary school programs like hunger relief. We feed like 50 to 300 people per month. Uh, before COVID, we used to do that. And then we would do work to feed the hungry, like 500 people per year. That's a target with the help of uh, Buddhist Global Relief uh, from U USA. And, uh, this, is in, this Global Relief, uh, Global Buddhist Relief was founded by Bhikkhu Buddhist. So he sponsors us uh, how we can feed these people. And uh, we do work for the hungry. So he, he really helps us, especially with the school. There's International Buddhist Day also we have, and the Buddha Day of Visak, of course, and Rob of Frank Simon Katina once a year. We have women and youth empowerment pro programs. And for the public health programs, we have water projects. So we have already dug six wells, uh, actually more now, uh, and it benefits over 1,000 people per day on the school day because for schools have football halls, we, we give them. So for me, I'm doing all this program following what we call the Buddha's teaching on compassion in action and also for, to do something for the benefit and welfare for all beings. So that's why I did all these things, not only just mindfulness of breathing in and out or make loving kindness only in the temple, but I go out of the temple and really I do these things uh, outside the temple and the, the, the uh, spirit. So we continue on. Next slides. All right, I've told you that we do international retreats and uh, you can see some people from Australia, Singapore. Uh, we have somebody from Italy and then the Christian nuns and the father. Unfortunately, this Christian father in a white collar uh, died on, uh, around Christmas time. They say he died of COVID. He was inspiring me a lot. He's the one who actually invited me to teach at his university. Uh, it's a Christian university, and I used to teach mindfulness there. So you can see Christian nuns joining us. Actually, on this retreat, we had more Christian nuns than Buddhist people. <laughs> yeah. So this is part of my missionary work to, uh, to really uh, teach all beings, not just Buddhist, not, uh, but all people of all without any discrimination. So these people have a challenge. I mean, challenged me, oh, they say, you're a Buddhist monk, you are going to convert us into Buddhism. I said, no, I'm not teaching to convert you. I'm just teaching just to, for, the, for, the, for peace and happiness. And they say, oh, you know, but this is Buddhism. And I told them, well, if you, if you're a woman, 
They say, no, no, no. What about if you learn English? Do you forget your language like Luganda? They say no. So they all attended, actually. So this is something that I do uh, as part of uh, uh, propagation of the Dharma. So we continue on another slide. Uh, then that book I'm holding uh, is uh, Sowing Seeds of Peace. Actually, this book, uh, I wrote it because the Christian father asked me to write a book on my influence. So at that time, we gave free copies to all these people who participated in this, during this retreat. Just stay close to here. And they are from different countries, actually. They all like mindfulness, actually. So and people are very receptive about mindfulness, actually, here in Uganda. So you go to another slide. This is more illustrating what I do here uh, to rekindle the spirit. All right, so this is International Buddhist Day celebrations. You can see many people, including, including a Christian nun again, my mother there, who's a Buddhist nun, and then a Christian father there, who's in a, a suit. Uh, the Christian father there, the one who passed away, this a monk from Burma. Then we have different people like cultural leaders. That's why, why you see an army man there. So that we have International Buddhist Day celebration. People come from a different backgrounds. All of them are non Buddhist per se, but because the Dhamma, people love the Dhamma when we teach it here in Africa. I teach it according to the African context, right? That's why you saw what you saw in our mission and, and vision and mission. So I teach it in the context of African culture. So that's why you see most of the people uh, come and listen to these talks. So we go to another um, slide. Yes, I, I've told you that uh, we have what you call water projects, water projects uh, and sanitation. So I know that, uh, of course, most people here, they cannot, they don't have access to clean water. And for me, out of compassion, I would like to, uh, I wanted to, offer clean water to the community. So this is the borehole that we offer to school, a school nearby. And these monks are from Burma, actually. They came here to support my missionary work. About 12 of them, they came to ordain monks, actually. here. We had ordination in Uganda. So they came and I made sure that this coincided with the opening a borehole in the school. So again, this is a, not just giving water, but actually teach people compassion in action, right? Yes. So we go to another slide. Again, this is a, a, a water, uh, supplying water to the community. And when people come actually, uh, when they're getting clean water, they, they have a different uh, thoughts about Buddhism. Before they are doubting what Buddhism do, they do Kung Fu, what, what. But once they see that they, as a, a missionary, you are doing something to make a difference in their life. They actually start coming to learn Buddhism. And also, if they don't come, the children actually come. It's amazing how many children come to our temple on Sundays. Yes, this is because through this uh, rekindling of the spirit of, of missionary work. Next slide, please. Yes, this one is uh, our school. Uh, we have a school and we invite it at the temple. There's some children from our school there. Uh, the, the, the one dressing blue color, we have somebody from Nepal, there's one uh, from Bangladesh, there's a monk from Burma. So I invite us to different monks from different countries from time to time here to teach the Dharma. Next, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so you see many monks. These are Buddhist monks from Ceylon, Myanmar, German, Mexico, USA, Bangladesh, uh, peace and conflict. And uh, that time we opened a SEMA. That means ordination hall in Uganda. Before I had to send children to other countries to them, but now we can ordain monks in Uganda. So that's also 
part of uh, the things we do here in propagating the Dharma is that we need to uh, really uh, instill this spirit to the young, young generation. And uh, just like Confucius, Conf I think it was Confucius who said that uh, if you want to plan for one year, you plant rice. If you want to plant for 10 years, you plant trees. But if you want to plan for 100 years, uh, uh, educate children. So now uh, I, uh, from time to time, I call monks from around the world so that they can learn Dhamma. And that's planning for another 100 years. When you have a vision of 100 years, you are rekindling the spirit of missionary. You are rekindling missionary spirit actually because that's really a big vision uh, and uh, you leave it uh, you live up to it so next slide this is more of a community outreach um we have some of the volunteer from australia this one from nepal and the monk here from uganda so they go and to the nearby village and try from time to time ask what, how they feel about us and all these things because communities keep on changing, children keep on growing, people, new people come, old one go, go. So we keep on so, uh, going to the community and ask them how they, they feel about uh, our presence here. So their perception basically about uh, the Buddhist temple. So, and also uh, ask them questions, uh, but we, uh, we, we've done it also before, as a way to see, uh, to check how's our, our propagation of Dhamma in the community going. But some people say, oh, for us, we don't, we are afraid of going to the temple. We don't know what we are doing. And with the community outreach, that's why I said, no, you are always welcome. So again, we check in like that. We continue on. This is our peace school. It's a temporary structure, and uh, all children go to school for free of charge. Uh, this is sponsored by an organization called Buddhist Global Relief in New York. Each, each year they give us a grant. Uh, still, we are having what called temporary structures, but we hope to build good structures. It's the same, I, I've told you about education. So we feel that if we educate children like uh, that age, uh, like preschool, they are the future of, 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 of the Dharma in Uganda. So we educate them. I go there to teach meditation. You're going to see more photos about this peace school. And of course, th those who are coming from peace school, they will join the primary school, uh, primary school. So they, will, they have some idea. So they come to the temple actually these children, this school, so it's mixture. You know? So we continue on. These are the children. This one, I, I told you we have a few children because we just, we just have the limited budgets. So uh, tw those are 12 children, but uh, they have two teachers and we teach them meditation. So it's amazing to see the young children uh, start meditation from that age. Dalai Lama said one time, his own is the Dalai Lama said, that if you want to wipe away violence in one generation, teach meditation to eight year old child. So this is, I believe it actually, because when I teach mindfulness meditation to these kids, they're very, very peaceful. These, these teachers actually, they use not to, no meditation. Once they saw the children were very peaceful, not so wild, the, the teachers also started coming to the temple to learn meditation. Again, this is part of one way we can propagate the Dhamma. We continue. Okay, well, with all that, there's more to do also to say, and, and there's more I'm doing, but let's go to the challenges of the growth and development of Buddhism in Uganda. Of course, there's a need for more, need for more financial and human resources to expand our activities. So uh, we, we need more uh, uh, human resources, uh, people, volunteers, all volunteers, even from international countries. I used to have volunteers from, um, from America, you know. So of course, financial needs also resources uh, to build uh, buildings and other things to run the organization. So this one is always going to be work in progress. 
But also there's a misconception of Buddhism by the general public. Uh, and that misconception comes from movies. They have seen a lot of movies of tai, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and all these things. So people don't know exactly what Buddhism can offer. That's why we have done all these activities to tell them that there's more to Buddhism than Kung Fu. Of course, shortage of monks, nuns, and lay teachers to spread Buddhism in Uganda, but all, each of these challenges, I'm trying to solve them. Like for, for the show, I think for Buddhism, uh, misconception of Buddhism, I'm trying to uh, go into the media and people come here, news, newsletter, a newsletter go out and then newspaper, have appeared in the, in the television here. It's getting better, actually. And the shortage of monks, I'm, I'm training 12 monks to be, uh, each year I'm going to see if I can train 12, 12 monks uh, so that they can, uh, they can be uh, trained very well. And those are the ones who are going to be like uh, 60 monks the Buddha sent out. Um, the Buddha sent 60 arahants around the world. <laughs> yes, and that's why Buddhism is in Uganda because of those 60. Yes, so now also I'm preparing 60. Uh, I don't know <laughs> when it's going to be achieved, but uh, this year I'm starting with 12 of them. So that means down, down the road, like five years from now, we should have 60 monks in, in Uganda, actually, if all go well. And then uh, we can see how they can impact uh, the African continent when it comes to Buddhist missionary. So let's continue, please. This way, future plans. Build a Buddhist primary school and secondary school for training monks and nuns. That's what we are doing, actually. We have started even excavating and uh, we'd like the, at least this year to start the uh, to build and next year we should start the Buddhist primary school. So build a housing complex to accommodate the treatments and lead teachers. So I need a place where I can lead retreats here because I lead retreats in USA everywhere. And then when it come to Uganda, I cannot lead them because we lack housing complex. So this is the future plan to have a place where people can come here and meditate, uh, like if, if 30 people, if uh, can, they can come here and stay here for the weekend, and they can really learn Dhamma very well, uh, alongside with the monks I'm, I'm, I'm training. Right, thank you very much for your kind attention. So this is a short presentation. Uh, I regret the poor internet here in Uganda, so we didn't have a video, but I uh, hope you can understand uh, what we, yeah, those are the places, the people I'm training. Those are, these are the future plan. This, all these 12 boys uh, are staying here, actually. There is one girl there, it's mainly, there are 12 actually. She substituted one, yeah, but he's going to come. So 12 of them, they will be trained starting in May. Before we start, they will be novice monks. These are going to be trained, and then every time I'll have another batch. 12, 12, 12 times five, that's 60. So I'll mention the spirit here by having, uh, uh, by teaching those children how to meditate and how to, uh, to spread Dhamma, and to learn uh, how to practice Dhamma and spread the Dhamma so that I can count on them so that they can continue to other countries in Africa. Like each, if each one of them can go to another country in the future, like Kenya, Tanzania, Chad, oh, we are, we are about 54 countries here. So then uh, that's uh, the missionary work I'm doing. Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate your attention. I've been to Malaysia. I love my Be well up and peaceful. Yes. Another slide, please. Yes. How to make a donation to your center? Somebody asked this question. I think yeah. you can answer that question. Yeah, I see it okay. in your chat. Okay, we'll we'll post it in the in the BGI Facebook later. Yes. Yeah, and we'll put it in the YouTube also. Yes. Okay. So, so uh, with all uh, giving Dhamma talk, 
all the drama work you are doing in Malaysia. I know you are doing great work in Malaysia. And so what you are doing to all beings, may all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May all that merit that accrues from our practices, our Dharma work, benefit all beings. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May ye, all beings, all sentient beings, share in our marriage. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May ye attain Nibbana. I'm going to do some Pali chanting. Punyatam Amoli to Achiramra Kant, Locasa Sana Chiramra Kant, Sana Chiramra Kant, Mampara E. Tawata Jacame, Sampadam Punya, Sampada, Sabe Deva and Modan to Sabe Buddha and Modan to. Sabe sata anumodan tu sabba sampati sitiya. Then, ida me nyati na hotu, also reflect along with natayo. Ida me nyati na hotu, sukita hotu nyatayo, nyatayo sabbiti yo vajyan tu sabaro govina satu. Mateva wantantara yo sikiti gai kovala. Taro Dhamma Wantante Aywano Sukambala Bhatt Sabamangala Rakant Sabadevata Sababudan Bhavena Sabadaman Bhavena Sabasanga Bhavena Sacheka Nanche Ambaram Arahanta Nanche Teje Narakambanda Misabbaso Orahansis May you be well and peaceful May you be free from suffering and its causes You say Sadhu Sadu, sadu. Okay. Sadu, sadu.